Hi guys, welcome to 2024. First day back at work, this video will go up tonight and will be available tomorrow morning. The <laughs> Friday the 19th. So, one of the comments last year asked about our blue water bungee in terms of how strong it is. They asked us to stretch it out in its full length and pull it until it breaks. Whether it's 10 meter, 20 meter, 30 meter, that makes no difference. So what we've done is we've made a small one, exactly the same way as the big one, same components. This will show you exactly what that will stretch to and how it will break. The bungee itself, Blue Water Bungee, has a Dyneema core. The core is wrapped at the ends with eyes. You can clip long lines onto these. The problem with that is this is way stronger than that. So we're gonna break this to show you how strong it is. Then we're gonna pull on these and show you how these are. The way to probably do it is to have a small shackle here. These are already on your, our guns, they're also on our floats. I would bypass it and clip straight onto the swivel with the small shackle. That's gonna be way stronger. Don't rely on this for big fish. It's a blue water bungee. It's for hunting fish in blue water. You want maximum tension. So let's break the components inside just to show you how strong the components themselves are. So we're back at our favorite test station. This is a standard long line clip. We varied them over the years. We think we had quite a strong component these days. Generally, these are stronger than the mono. So if your shooting line is a mono, this will be greater breaking strain than your mono. If anything's gonna break, you'd rather have it break in front of the gun so you get your gun back. You don't want this behind the gun to fail first. You then lose your whole gun. We don't mind, we'd sell you another gun, no problem, but I'm sure you'll mind. So, set up in here is the long line clip, shackled one end, looped with a couple of strands of Dyneema. We're now gonna haul on it, see what it can take. Little bit of distortion already at 70. Mono would have snapped by now. Keeps going. Pretty much opened up now at over 200. I'm gonna back that off. As you see, that's still okay. 200 odd, but it is deformed. Uh, I wouldn't use that again. I personally have a little trick. I'm sure you've seen it in our previous videos where we slide a piece of rubber over that that encapsulates that zone. That probably adds another 50 kilos of tension. So we know here we got 200 plus kilos. Now we're gonna change over to the core itself, which is Dyneema. Let me break that. Some of you might notice, although the cord inside is Dyneema, we have it made in a different color because this is a softer weave. It's not suitable as a spear line. Because it's a softer weave, it's actually stronger. It's all about the way the fibers form. It's the same volume of fiber as what we use in our conventional shooting line. This being a lot stiffer, much easier to handle as a spear shooting line. This is way too soft. Some guys do use it, but it is a bit of an irritation being so soft. Yes, it does have a greater break strain and you can finger trap it. What we've done here is finger trap the ends and then simply put a double granny knot. That gives us something to tie onto. You have to have the granny knot to stop the line slipping down. As you'll see here, behind here, there is a small knot. So let's pull on the Dyneema. Let's see how strong that is. Normally goes just over 180. Obviously to test this properly, you need to do multiples of them simultaneously to get an average. I know this tends to get to about 180. Coming up there now. Slightly better than average, 190, 200. So you can see this is now, well, don't know what it actually broke at, but it's slightly stronger than the long line clip. I would still not rely on the long line clip, but if you really wanted to, 
sliding that little rubber onto here, which you'll see. We can put a link up to how I showed which is the best way to use these long gun clips. But to be safe, rather clip into the swivel. Now what we're gonna haul on is the tube itself. There's no core inside here. So this is just a loop with a knot, loop with a knot. We normally only allow this to twice its length in stretch, about 180% to 200% stretch. Let's see how that goes. So we have two types of rubber. One is what we use for our gun bungees. This is not your conventional latex. This is a type of thermoplastic urethane. This one is softer. The one we use for blue water is stiffer. If you look at our blue water float lines in our other videos, you'll see what the actual brake strains and test points are. That's at about five or six kilos before it bottoms out. When it bottoms out, you're now taking all the strain on the Dyneema. You saw what that broke at, over 200 kilos. That will give you more than enough. So, set up in here is the blue water rubber, just with knots in the end. There is nothing in the middle. Let's show how strong that gets to. It's plus minus 10 centimeters long. That's at zero. At 20 will give us what we allow to pull to before. There we go. Now recall, it's about a 20 kilo tension. At about 20 kilos, it'll just start pulling down a 25 liter float when it hits maximum. So now I'll just keep pulling on it. This is quite dangerous. I'm covering my eyes. You see, you don't really gain much in terms of actual brake strain. All it's doing is stretching longer and longer. We don't like it to stretch more than double. Main reason is you don't want the fish to have too much freedom. You want to have some control. Getting 100% is good. As you see there, we don't gain much more. We probably three times the length now it can stretch to without breaking, but you're not gaining anything. At about 100% stretch, we're getting about 17 to 18 kilos. 300%, we're only getting 20. No advantage to allow that to stretch so much. There's also a cost factor. The more Dyneema you add on the inside, the greater it's going to cost. So. I'm not gonna pull that any further. Pretty pointless, you see there's no real gain. So the material itself isn't strong. Now all we're gonna do is demo a short one of the exact same thing. All that's gonna happen is that's going to stretch until it locks out and then it'll break the Dyneema. Having covers on the end might give me a greater brake strain. So I expect at least 200 kilos on that. Okay, so here we set up blue water bungee with all the same components we would add. Let's keep stretching. At about 17 kilos is the max stretch. We find this sort of tension about the best in terms of controlling the fish. If it's too soft, we have used softer ones, the fish tend to have, you have no control over the fish. They tend to run all over the place. So it should end at about 17. Oh, now we're coming up on the Dyneema. You see immediately a jump there. So now the load is on the Dyneema internally. Whether you can add that 20 kilos to the Dyneema, we'll find out now. 190. Yeah, just under. You can see it's failed very close to what the snap snap clip, some people call them, or long line clip, we call them, without this collection. So in theory, you can use that. I wouldn't want to. I would rather trust the shackle itself. Correction, the swivel. These swivels go at about 400 kilos, 450 kilos, so they're very strong. This is not where you're going to have a problem. Um, these can foul. There is a way in some incidences I've demoed it before. If your line happens to jam over there, if it pulls adequately enough, it can undo itself. That's another reason for slipping the little piece of rubber over that to stop that happening. Guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. Please feel free to ask for any other test videos you might want. We got no problem testing them and showing you exactly how our product works, how strong they are, how not strong they are in case, some cases. 
Hope you enjoyed that video. Stand by for the next. Music. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.